Okay, it's Monday, October 16th, 7.15. We're in the second floor conference room. We'll call to order the uh, City of Brainerd Personnel and Finance Committee meeting, and we'll start with introductions. Kara Terry, Ward 1. Jennifer Burton, City Administrator. Connie Hillman, City Finance Director. John Davis, Police Chief. Oliver Large, Kevin Stulick. Chris Schubert, HR Director. Jesse Dean, City Engineer. Teresa Burke, Brainerd Dispatch. Joe Langle, City Attorney. Jeff Chesak, City Council. And Gabe Johnson, Chair of the Committee. We have five published items, but there was a sixth item that has since been added, and it's another resignation of an employee. So we'll start with the first item, which is to authorize signatures and enter into a school resource services agreement. Chief. Here asking to do 180. <laughs> so um, as I'm sure you already know, uh, Attorney General Ellison gave a second opinion on the legislative changes affecting school resource officers. He addressed the remaining um, questions that he had chose not to address uh, the first time around. And to summarize uh, his opinion is that the amendment does not limit the types of reasonable force that may be used by school staff and agents to prevent bodily harm or death. It also does not limit the types of reasonable force that may be used by public officers to carry out their lawful duties as described in Minnesota statute 609.06. The test for reasonable force remains unchanged and highly fact specific. And pertaining to the Attorney General uh, opinion, uh, statute uh, section 8.07 provides that on all school matters, Attorney General opinions like this one are decisive and the Minnesota Supreme Court has confirmed the opinions are binding until overruled by the courts. Um, now, this was not probably as perfect as a solution, and we were, you know, as we all know, looking and hoping for a calling of a special session and changing the actual uh, language. Um, however, um, the opinion has satisfied our main concerns, which brought us here the first time to withdraw from the contract. Um, after reviewing some guidance from the League and the Minnesota <coughs> Peace Officers Association and Attorney Langle, um, it, like I said, it's felt that our majority of our concerns um, have been alle alleviated. Uh, you know, one matter of question would be is if this ended up, a matter such as this ended up in court and what the courts would have to say about the Attorney General's opinion. But uh, as we are now, we're coming to you uh, recommending to re-enter into the contract with the school district on October 9th. The school board did approve re-entering in. Um, the original contract uh, before with the withdrawal was for $91,788, and that was for the 23-24 school year. Um, the, the new contract proposal is to prorate that first school year amount to make up for the 24 days that the SRO would be absent, and therefore, um, this school year would be a payment amount of $78,905. So recommended action before you is to authorize signatures and enter into the proposed school resource officer service agreement between the City of Brainerd and the school district. I shall move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Kara? So, Chief, were we still providing similar services, just not in the school, but I know he was Correct. controlling around the school, and so we were still devoting him as a resource to the school if there were any issues? To, to, to a degree, yes. Um, yeah, our, our objective was, when possible, to keep him in relative close proximity. Mm -hmm. um, that occurred a lot of the times. There were some occasions where other responsibilities and duties had, you know, taken him away from there, but that was our desire and yeah. what we had set forth on a daily basis. Just wondering if that should... I know it probably isn't going to, but should take part in the um, prorating of the contract amount because we still did dedicate that resource there as best we could. Sorry. No. In the six weeks or whatever that we weren't there, how many calls or how much activity was there? Yeah, you know, we, as far as activity, we had probably been called to the school eight to 12 times. Um, I think when they, the matters that they called us on 
were a lim little more limited and wouldn't necessarily mirror what his involvement would have been. I think simply since he's in the school and accessible, there's probably Mr. other other needs that they would, you know, ask of him. Whereas without him in the school, um, I believe that some things they may have included him in, him on. They probably just elected to handle, you know, administratively themselves. I think it's a good move to have him back. Totally agree. Yeah, so I agree with what Kara said, and based on my anecdotal op observations, there was pretty much always one op one squad, if not two squads, on Fifth Street. Pretty much any time I drive by during the school days, we were definitely in the vicinity. Sure. But the school board worked so well with us to cancel the contract when we had concerns to get it back going right now and. Let's just work together and get it going, get the officers back. And, and if I may, if, if it means anything, that was never a request of us from the school district. That's just a decision I have made independently as far as daily operational assignments. So it was never a request or a want. I know they appreciated it, but you know, it was just an independent Good decision. decision. Yeah. So. Okay. okay, hearing no other discussion, we vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Next up, thank you, Chief. Next up, the 2024 budget discussion on the number of sworn officers we have in the budget. So at the, the one minute behind schedule. Okay. <laughs> um, the current budget as of September 13th included 26 officers, sworn officers. As of today, the city employs 27. At the budget workshop, we um, I included the slides that were presented to council and discussion was held that there should be 26 or 27. Um, since it was a workshop, no motion could be made. And it was also asked that the police chief give talking points as to the importance and the need of 27 officers. Um, and attached to the agenda request was those um, talking points. Staff feels that we should budget for 27 sworn officers for the following reason. The reasons. The city currently employs 27 officers. And as mentioned at the workshop, historically the city budgets for its full-time employees that are active at the end of the year, so that would be 27. We talked about the risk um, and during the 2023 budget meetings by budgeting for 25 and a half, but planning on getting to 27 would have an impact on the budget year when we did get to 27. And the one-time public safety aid is available to lower the impact of budgeting for 27 officers in 2024. For example, the, kit, the council could fund the additional 1.5 positions, excluding the cost of para, 100% in 2024, 66% in 2025, and 33% in 2026. Just at the one so third. I, I like what you put together there for that option. Mm -hmm. Three counties, so we can kind of just slowly step up mm -hmm. the budgetary numbers. So. Agreed. Can you make that motion? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I make the motion. To direct staff to budget for 27 yeah. sworn officers yes, in the 2024 yes. budget and to use a one time public safety aid to the eligible cost. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. We have a motion and a second to go with the uh, option number three there. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. All right, we're never ahead of schedule. Let's take our time on this next one. <laughs> Accept the resignation of Administrative Specialist Brittany Tollefson. Chris. Good evening. <coughs> Administrative Specialist Brittany Tolson in our Public Works Department has submitted her resignation. That is effective. Her last working day is October 25th. At this time, staff is asking for you to accept her resignation and authorize staff to proceed with the hiring process to backfill the position. I so move. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Post same sign. That motion carries. Now let's consider the approval of the Environmental Resources Technician position. Chris. Due to increased governmental requirements and applicable workloads um, issues, staff for the cities of Brainerd and Baxter have discussed the need to hire an environmental resources technician to oversee our stormwater system and applicable permits. Uh, at this time, a joint year-round full-time position is recommended with the cost for this new position being shared between the two cities. I attached a letter from the city of Baxter uh, confirming their desire for this joint position. Also attached was a draft job description, and um, we included a wage grid as recommended by our classification and compensation study consultant. At this point, um, if council is agreeable to this new position, staff will work with the city at Baxter to develop a formal agreement that would include salary benefits, office space computers, etc., and split the cost at 50-50% for the first three years. And during that time frame, time will be tracked so we can see if that is appropriate. 
At this point, um, staff is asking for a motion to approve the new environmental resources technician position, including the proposed job description and 2023 wage grid as presented. Further, that staff negotiate a formal agreement for the joint position with the city of Baxter, as well as the recommended wage with the IBEW Administrative Support Union. I so move. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? Let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries. Then the added item is we have a resignation that was emailed out to us. We have yeah, we're still on five. Oh, sorry, the arrow put it up. I I assume you have we have number six and then put the arrow. So okay. we got your back. Which one do you want to do? I first? would do just the resignation of Katie. Okay, so we have resignation of recreation coordinator. Correct. Chris. Um, recreation coordinator Katie Coughlin resigned and um, submitted her written resignation on Friday, October 13th. Staff recommends to um, accept her resignation and to approve the updated job description that I presented or provided to you, basically just changing from five years of experience as a minimum to three years, and then to authorize staff to begin the hiring process to backfill the position. I so. Second. So I, I don't like the idea of the city council straight backfilling the position. I think we should forward it to the Park and Recreation Board and have that board kind of put, give their input on the position description. Because we reorganized in the Public Works Department a few years ago, they've seen changes in what they need, what they want, and I think the city council just giving them what they already had when maybe they might be looking for something different. They're meeting in, before our next meeting. So I think if we send this to them, they can give us some input, kind of like... So they the come back to us with a recommendation. Right, right like the I Public agree. Utility Commission does with their employees I'm to the city council. So. So, friendly change the motion to not backfill position, but accept the resignation and forward the job description to the public or the, yeah, the Parks and Rec to review it and give us a recommendation. I'm fine with that. Okay, any discussion on that or that motion? No, I'm fine with that. It seems reasonable. Yeah, well, okay. We'll just do that upstairs if we're all in agreement. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Both same sign. That motion carries. Now, the fun one. Mm -hmm. Authorized submission of the State of Minnesota Office of Attorney General Nonprofit Charity Complaint Form. Jennifer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I guess I'll just start out. Attorney Langle is also here late this afternoon. We did get an email from David Archer, who is the attorney representing Lakes Media Collaborative. He has asked uh, if we would, uh, he's requested that the city table any motion for authorization to allow them the opportunity to provide comments. So I will not uh, entertain any motions to be tabling anything. So we could go forward and submit the complaint form, or we could, it, just being friendly, what's another three weeks, give them an opportunity to provide feedback, which we're not legally obligated to do in any way. But well, if they want to give feedback. At least they responded back. So right. based on that, I would say give them the three so weeks. Let's give them the three weeks. They have to get into our packet by our packet deadline on Thursday. If not, that we go out. So let's make that motion to not table, I'm not, not tabling anything, but let's make the motion to give them the opportunity Extend to provide feedback years. by packet for our next meeting. Okay. You guys are nicer than I am, but I will make that motion. Okay, second. We have a motion and a second to allow them to provide feedback. Did I miss anything that we should know, Joe? Legality, we're good. Joe? No, oh, we're fine. Okay, good. We're good. Yeah, it's, they think they would need to correct, correct some inaccuracies. Everything in it is accurate. But they're trying to buy some time for some but reason. they didn't respond. We'll give them the time. Yep, they are responding. We know where some of their money is going, and it's going to attorney's fees. <laughs> okay, we'll vote on that. All in favor say aye. 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 Oh, same sign. Carries. 729. Let's hustle. We're going to look like 